Question 1. Ross has $2 and $5 notes. There are 15 more $2 notes than $5 notes. The total amount of $5 notes is $90 more than the total amount of $2 notes. What is the total value of all the $5 notes that Ross has? Essentially, the story is saying these are the two different types of notes. And currently, there are 15 more $2 notes. All right, 15 more $2 notes than the $5 notes. However, even though there are more $2 notes, you add them up, the $5 notes is still worth more than $2, worth more by $90 in total. So they are now asking you to find what is the total value of all these $5 notes. If we are able to figure out the number of $5 notes there are, we just need to multiply that by $5. And that will be the total value of all the $5 notes. So the way to approach this question is to imagine that this statement is no longer in the picture. Therefore, what I meant is, initially, right now, there are 15 more $2 notes, but no longer the case. We're going to remove that 15 $2 notes. And because of that, the difference is no longer $90, isn't it? The difference will increase. Increase by how much? Well, 15 $2 notes, that's $30 in value, isn't it? So the difference between them is going to grow by another $30 to give you one to zero dollars. Hence, let me write out the first step. Difference in total amount between all the $5 notes and all the $2 notes after removing the $15 notes. So the difference between them will increase, isn't it? Increase by, let me bracket it just to show you the partition, times 15. Okay, and that will give you one to zero dollars. The difference between them will increase by another $30 to reach one to zero dollars. As of now, there is an equal number of $2 and $5 notes, an equal number. So for each pair, for every $2 and $5 notes, for every pair, the difference is $3, isn't it? If there are two of this and two of this, the difference will be $6. If there's three of this and three of this, the difference, $9. So how many pair do we need to reach the difference of one, two, zero. Hence, the second step, number of pair of $2 and $5 notes. All right, how many pair? We're gonna take one, two, zero, divided by three dollars to give us 40 pairs all right which means they are 42 dollars and 45 dollars again why we take one two zero divided by three because for every pair the difference is three dollars and we need to get to the one two zero dollar difference so we are dividing it to get 40 pairs so what is the total value of all the five dollar notes well, we have $42 and $45 notes, so we can go to the answer. Total value of all the $5 notes that Ross has. So 40 times five dollars and that will give us the answer of two hundred dollars okay let me remove this to show you the original question moving on question two 
This is a fairly common question. A group of students arrange themselves into rows of 16 each. That means every row there are 16 students, all right? If they arrange themselves in rows of 11, they could form three more rows with seven students left. How many students were there? Now let me draw out what they are trying to say. So initially, let's uh, do this. There's the first row, there's the second row, so on and so forth. And each row, there are 16 people. All right, 16. And let me copy this down, 16. And you get the idea, the pattern continues until the very last row. How many rows are there? That is what we are trying to find out also. Next, something happened. They decided to rearrange themselves into row of 11. Okay, so out of this 16, okay, let me, out of this 16, now they just want to have 11. So we're going to partition this out. Five, five people over here. So if 11, 11, this five people, they're going to leave. All right, they're going to leave. We're going to exit. They're going to exit to form the new rows, isn't it? All right, so they're going to come, all these five people in each row, they're going to leave their current rows and form new rows. How many? They are, they are all going to combine together and form three more rows with seven students that, that can't join anywhere. All right, so I'm going to use the red color. They're going to form new rows. So let me cut off here. They're going to form the three new rows. All right, I will just write this as a new first row, the new second row, and the new third row. Over here, they're going to have the same 11 students. All right, so 11 per row, 11, 11, and we're going to have the leftover seven students who have nowhere to go. So all these five, 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 they're going to leave and they're going to form all this. So how many students are there over here? There are 40 students, isn't it? Where do all these 40 students, they, they come from? They have to come from all over here. All right, all the five, 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 they're going to leave and together there are 40 of them. They're going to form orders. All right, three rows of 11 and seven left. So are we able to figure out five, five, five to get to 40? How many rows are there initially? Yes, right? So let me minimize everything here. We're going to start our first step, which is to calculate the number of students that left their initial rows, okay, for example. And we have 11 times 3 plus the 7. Okay, 11 times 3 plus the 7 to get the 40. Again, these 40 students, they are the 5 students that left, okay, to form this 40. From here, we can calculate the number of rows at first, which is 40 divided by 5 to get 8 rows. Why 8? Again, every single row at first, 5 students have to leave. Alright, 5 students have to leave. So, in order to reach 40, 5, 5, 5, that means there must be 8 rows, isn't it, to form the 40. If there are 9 rows, this will be 45. If there are 7 rows, there will only be 37 pupils. Alright, so it must be 8 rows at first. Hence, from there, we can calculate the answer number of students there were well initially one row there are 16 so 8 of it 8 rows so will be 8 times 16 
that will be 80 plus 48, 1, 2, 8 students. Okay, so let's move on to question 3. Question 3. Ming gets $3 more daily allowance than Jem. Each of them spends $5 a day and saves the rest. After some days, Ming saved $109 and Jam saved $79. How much daily allowance does Ming get? Therefore, initially we have to recognize the relationship between the first and the second information. Given that each of them spends the same amount of money, which means this additional $3 will be the additional savings that Ming has more than Gem per day. First step, we have to calculate the difference in total savings between Ming and Gem. The total difference in savings will be 109 minus 79. That will give you $30. Think about it. How do they get to the difference of $30? It must have been built up day by day consistently to reach this amount, isn't it? Again, I mentioned earlier, every single day means save $3 more. Because it's been given $3 more, and they spend the same amount, therefore, Ming has to save this additional $3. Okay, so every single day, the savings that Ming has is $3 more. So that will be the daily gaps, isn't it? That's gonna widen. The first day, Ming's gonna save $3 more. The second day, Ming is gonna save $6 more. So how many days will it take to reach the difference of $30? That will be our next step. Number of days Ming took to save hundred and nine dollars thirty divided by three that will be ten days. Ten days for Ming to reach one zero nine, ten days for Jam to save seventy nine. Dollars, all right, to reach the difference of 30. Then from here, given that it took 10 days to spend slash save, we can figure out the daily allowance Ming gets. The amount saved per day will be 109 divided by 10 that will give you a day of savings for Ming and he spent $5 per day that will give you $10.90 plus 5 $15.90 this will be the amount Ming's get for his daily allowance. Next. Question 4. A wall needs to be painted. Sam alone takes 6 hours and Jerry alone takes 9 hours to paint the whole wall. Alright, so they are referring to the same wall. It's just that Sam took uh, lesser time than Jerry. If both of them paint the wall together, how long would it take to paint the whole wall? Now let's use a model to visualize the question. We have this wall happens to be drawn in a model form. Now this wall and okay for Sam and then we have the same wall in a copy paste that is meant for Jerry. Now this is two different scenarios, okay? It's talking about the same wall. 
It's just that Sam, imagine Tam, Sam took, uh, if Sam takes six hours, it just means that he partitioned it into six different parts, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, five. Each unit is just an hour. So one hour, the second hour, third, fourth, fifth, six hours, and then he would have finished. Using this logic, well, Jerry would have to divide it by nine segments. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine different parts. So again, first hour, second hour, third, fourth, fifth, six, seven, eight. At the ninth hour, then he will finish the same wall. Now, how many hours will it take for them if they do it together? The approach is to break down, is to cut the model such that we're going to divide, subdivide it even further to have equal units. Now, what is the common multiple for 6 and 9? 18. So what I'm going to do is, we're going to break it up in this manner. 3 units. Then 3 units, 3 units, 3 units, 3 units, 3 units. What about for Jerry? We're going to break it up into two units. And it will be two, 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 two. So imagine there's an agreement between them. They, they're going to say that, okay, we're going to mm, divide the wall into 18 segments. So there are 18 units, 18 units. Per hour, Sam is going to paint three units. And Jerry is going to paint five units. Again, uh, because they subdivide it into 18 segments, 18 units, in one hour, Sam is going to finish this, isn't it? All right, three units. And Jerry is going to finish two units. Therefore, in one hour, they can finish five units. In one hour, if they do it together, they're going to finish five units out of the entire 18. So from there, you can figure out actually how many hours it would take to finish the 18 units. Actually, so we can go straight to the answer. Actually, it's just one step. Time taken for them to paint the whole wall together. Which is, there are 18 units to be painted, isn't it, for the wall? Sam can paint 3 units in an hour, while Jerry can paint 2 units in an hour. Again, 5 units in an hour. So how many hours do we take to paint or eat in? Okay, so the answer or in terms of hours. We're going to divide it, simplify the fraction. To, we'll get 3 and 3 fifth hour, which is the answer. Since the question didn't specify, you need to give it in minutes, hours, fraction, or decimal. Then we just leave it as this, alright? This is fine. Okay, so we are done.